has been produced by the authority of the National Federation of State High School Athletic Associations. The executive committee of this federation establishes sound uniform athletic rules and policies for all 46 member states. The committee and the state executive officers weld the entire nation into a unit that encourages a well-administered athletic program in each member school. The officials for this film are Clifford Shaw of Arkansas, Dwight Patterson of Arizona, Morris Ward of New Mexico, Charles Burke of Missouri. Everybody hustle. Like to be out there? Well, maybe next year, with a few more pounds, a little more height, who knows? Meantime, well, this season, you just look on and maybe do a little daydreaming. This is one of the most terrific games we've ever had the privilege to watch. The Jackrabbits, even though a 21-point underdog, have played a game like I've never seen them play before. But the massive strength of these Tigers is just a little too much for them. It's beating them down into the ground. There's less than a minute to play in the ball game, and the score stands. The Tigers 12 and the Jackrabbits 7. Well, the tiger has really unleashed his fury today. Listen to this crowd howl. But the poor rabbits are backed up against their own goal line. Fourth down and 42 to go for a first down. Jones! Jones! Get in there for Miser. Say, wait a minute. There's a substitution. I don't even know who he is. Hey, who's 20? Jones! Jones in. I've never heard of him before. It's Jones for Miser. Well, what are you going to call? Just give the ball to me. And now the Rabbits move up out of the huddle into the line of scrimmage. It's a T formation with a flanker to the right. Here comes the play. Quarterback takes the ball, pitches deep to Jones. He's fading back for a pass. He's fading back. There he goes. He's trapped in the backfield. He gets away from one tackler. He avoids another. He gets away from the third tackler as well. He's still fading past. Now he's set for the pass. He heaves. And it's a completed perfect pass to Collins. Collins is trapped, however, and he starts to run backwards. And now he ladles that ball off to Jones. Jones takes it. He sidesteps one. He moves over to his left. He starts to cut around. He's moving upfield now. He's up to the 50. He's moving across the 50. Down to the 40. He's up to the 40. He's going to go all the way. He's in the clear. He's going down to the goal line. It's a touchdown. And the Jackrabbits win. And the winner is an unknown by the name of Jones. Yes, this is your season for daydreams. But wait a little while. Hang around. There's always another year. And maybe next year will be your year to make some of those dreams come true. All right, boys, let's get started. We haven't got too much time, and we've got a lot to cover. First, I want to say I'm mighty happy to see such a good turnout. That goes for you new men, as well as the old. Now, we're all starting from scratch. You've all got the same chance of making the team. Whether you're brand new, or whether you've lettered your last three years, we play no favorites. But there are certain things we expect of you. 
number one you've got to follow our training rules we'll see that you all get a copy of these there's simple enough keep regular hours at least eight hours of sleep every night plenty of fresh air and exercise and i'll guarantee you get plenty of that during the next few months eat three good meals a day and that includes breakfast none of this skimping business the council of foods of the american medical association okays milk fruit cereal and bread and butter and that's the least you should have for breakfast if you want more okay mom i guess i've been in training all my life and didn't know it what's that well i can't remember a time we haven't had wheaties for breakfast and you were practically raised on them sure breakfast of champions well they should be there's a whole kernel of wheat in every flake enough vitamins and minerals to really count now, contrary to what some of you might think, it takes brains to play this game of football. If you can't keep your grades up, we can't use you on this team. So it's up to you to work on your studies. Third, your personal conduct. And that goes for off the field as well as on. Remember, you're representing your school. I want you to dress neatly and act like men, because it takes men to play this game. The fourth point, practice. To stay on this squad, you'll have to report to practice every day. For our part, we're going to give you the best equipment made to protect you from head to foot. What size shoes do you wear? 9E. Hey, Wilson, that's what all the big stars were. Johnny Lujak, Charlie Trippy, all of them. Sure it is. You're getting the best equipment money can buy. Wilson. It's recommended by coaches like Lynn Waldorf, Bob Voigts, Vicki Munn, and a lot of others. And if you use it right, it'll take care of you. But it's up to you to take care of it. Don't worry about that. Now we're going to spend this session going over the first thing you have to know about football. The rules. I want each of you to pick up a copy on the way out. Keep it and study it, because I expect all of you to know them thoroughly before our first game. Now you all know what a football field looks like. But this year there are a couple of new additions. This is a fence. It's five yards from the boundary line and runs all around the field. This is the coaches and substitutes box. We gotta stay right in this area. And speaking of substitutions, this year we can substitute as many men as we like during a dead ball. Now the unit of the game is the down. There are two kinds of downs. The scrimmage down and the free kick down. In the scrimmage down, the ball is put in play by the snap. The snap begins when the ball is lifted from the ground. It ends when a player touches the ball, or when the ball touches the ground. Then it becomes like any backward pass, a loose ball, and can be recovered and advanced by any player. This rule can be used in several plays. For instance, the quarterback may take the ball, fake a handoff, then put the ball on the ground. The center picks it up, and off he goes. In the backfield, only one man may be less than a yard behind the line of scrimmage, and his hands must be in position to take the snap, whether it comes to him or not. When the quarterback moves out of position to take the snap, it's a five-yard penalty, illegal position. If more than one back is within one yard of the scrimmage line, it's illegal position, loss of five. A lineman must be stationary one second before the snap. When this lineman moves, it's an illegal shift. This lineman simulates action at the snap. It's a false start. Loss of five and any encroachment by B is ignored. The other type of down is the free kick down. 
It's used to put the ball in play at the start of a half or after a touchdown or a safety or if a team chooses after a fair catch. For a free kick, in this case the kickoff, each team has its free kick line. The kicking team, K, has to remain behind this line until the ball is kicked. And the receiving team, R, has to have at least five men within five yards of its free kick line till the kick is made. For the kickoff, the ball is placed on K's 40-yard line, here. The free kick down begins when K's toe touches the ball. It ends when the receiver is down. R can catch or recover and advance a free kick anywhere in the field of play. On this play, K touches the ball between the free kick lines, making it a short kick, but R recovers. R declines the short kick penalty and keeps the ball at the spot of recovery. If a free kick touches R first, it's never a short kick, and K may legally recover. But the ball may not be advanced, and all this running is wasted. If the ball is kicked out of bounds before it crosses the free kick line, it's not a short kick. It's merely out of bounds, and R's ball at the inbound spot. A free kick into the end zone becomes a dead ball immediately. It's a touchback. First touching of a free kick by K has no influence on the play. K touches the ball first, but muffs it toward R's goal, where R recovers. R's captain wants the ball at the spot of first touching, but that ruling only applies on scrimmage kicks, as we'll see later. Now let's cover briefly the rules on passing and handing the ball. The difference between passing and handing is just as simple as it sounds. In handing the ball, two players are touching it simultaneously. This is a forward handoff. This is a backward handoff. If the ball is in flight, it's a pass. This is a backward pass. And this is a forward pass. At the snap, six offensive players, players on Team A, are eligible to receive a forward pass. They are the players at each end of the line and four backs. The other five linemen, usually the center, guards, and tackles, are ineligible receivers. Now as for handing the ball. Behind the line, the ball may be handed forward to any backfield man or end. That holds true unless the man on the end is the snapper, or as in this case, next to the snapper. In this position, the end cannot receive a forward-handed ball. On this play, the snapper is on the left end of the line. The ball is handed forward to him. It's illegal. But with the same formation, the snapper on the left end of the line is an eligible forward pass receiver. The ball is passed forward to him. It's legal, and he's off for a touchdown. Now on a pass play, the center, guards, and tackles may make their initial charge, but they cannot go downfield until the pass is touched. However, these linemen may move downfield at the snap if the forward pass does not cross the line. To illustrate, here's a double pass play. The linemen hold their position even though the first forward pass is completed behind the line. Then a backward pass, and a second forward over the line. Linemen must hold positions until the pass over the line is touched. There are four types of illegal forward passes. A forward pass thrown from any point beyond the line of scrimmage is illegal. Loss of five and a down. A forward pass may be thrown only by the team that puts the ball in play by the snap. On this play, A throws a legal forward pass. B intercepts. But this pass is illegal. When a forward pass is batted by an ineligible man in or behind the line, 
it becomes an illegal forward pass. Here's the fourth type of illegal forward pass. The passer, in order not to be thrown for a loss, intentionally throws the ball to the ground. It's loss of five and a down. During a forward pass, no player who is beyond the line may interfere with any opponent. When a defensive man charges, pushes, holds, or otherwise interferes with an opponent, it's a 15-yard penalty and automatic first down, even if the pass is completed. Likewise, it's pass interference when offensive number 33 pushes his opponent to prevent an interception. Pass interference may not always involve contact. Here, number 46 disregards the ball and hinders his opponent's vision. It's pass interference. If a pass receiver goes down to his knees when he catches a pass, the ball is dead and can't be advanced. Charging or piling on is a foul. The same protection is given a player who signals for a fair catch of a kick. He cannot advance the ball from the spot of the fair catch, and the kicking team cannot tackle or charge him, or it's a foul. Remember that all the rules of football are written with this objective in mind, player safety. That's why the penalties are so rough for illegal use of hands. Striking an opponent with fist or forearm, and illegal use of elbows. And it's this safety factor that makes clipping a major foul. But a block doesn't have to be across the back of a man's legs to be clipping. Anytime a player charges or pushes an opponent's back, he's guilty of clipping. Don't do it. Our football code has a logical system for enforcing penalties, the three-in-one method. The basic spot from which any penalty is enforced depends on whether the foul occurs on a loose ball play or on a running play. This chart shows a loose ball play, a legal punt or forward pass. From the line of scrimmage, the ball is snapped, punted, hits the ground, and becomes dead here. This entire action is a loose ball play. Now, only four types of fouls can occur during this play. B might foul beyond the spot of snap or behind it. And A might foul beyond the spot or behind it. Now, these three fouls could not have affected A's kick. So, the penalty for each of them is enforced from the point of snap, the basic spot. But this foul might have helped A's kick, so the penalty is enforced from the spot of foul. Now this is a running play. In the scrimmage line, the ball is snapped, the runner advances to here where he is downed, and the ball becomes dead. Again, there are only four types of fouls that can occur during this play. But in a running play, the basic spot is here where the run ends. These three fouls could not have affected A's run. So on these, the penalty is enforced from the basic spot. This foul could have helped the runner. So the penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Now, if there should be a loose ball at the end of the run, like a fumble, it's treated as part of the running play. The basic spot is the spot where the run ended. The three-in-one method enables all spots of enforcement to be quickly determined, and the distance legally gained before the foul occurs is usually retained. But now, scrimmage kicks. There are three legal types of scrimmage kicks. The punt, the drop kick, and the place kick. For any place kick, the ball may be placed on a legal tee, but the toe of a shoe is not a legal tee. This is a foul. A scrimmage kick begins when the ball leaves the kicker's toe and ends when any player gets possession. A scrimmage kick also ends when it goes out of bounds between the goal lines. 
It's R's ball at the inbound spot. The nearest official marks the out-of-bound spot. And any kick ends when it goes into the receiver's end zone. It's a touchback. The ball will be put in play on R's 20-yard line. There are two important points to remember about scrimmage kicks. First, any touching of the ball in or behind K's line is ignored. Second, any player may advance the scrimmage kick, which is recovered behind this line. For instance, if the kick is blocked, any player can recover the ball and advance. K kicks, and the ball bounds off a teammate and goes out of bounds behind the line. It's R's ball at the inbound spot. K cannot recover and get possession of a scrimmage kick beyond the line unless R touches it first, as in this case. R muffs the ball and K recovers. It's K's ball at the spot of recovery. However, in this case, R's touching beyond the line does not affect the ruling because the kick goes into the end zone. It's a dead ball and a touchback. R's ball on their 20. Here's what happens if K touches the ball beyond the scrimmage line before R. K touches the kick first. The scramble is on. But no matter who finally recovers, it's R's ball. And R may take the ball at spot of K's first touching if they choose. Whenever team possession of the ball changes during a down, as in the scrimmage kick, a return kick can be made. The yard line through the spot of the kick becomes the same as the scrimmage line. And all the rules of scrimmage kicks apply. When play moves down close to either goal line, every man has to be alert, think, and act fast. Anytime a team legally gets possession of a live ball in the opponent's end zone, it's a touchdown. It makes no difference what force puts it over the goal line or how possession is gained. In this play, a pass into the end zone. B intercepts, but then fumbles. A recovers for a touchdown. But determining whether a safety or a touchback has been scored depends on the matter of force. Who applied the force that sent the ball over the goal line? If the force that puts the ball over the goal line is by the offensive team, as in a forward pass, and the defensive team gets possession in its end zone, it's a touchback. The force was A's pass. But here, B intercepts A's pass on the one-yard line. In trying to advance, B is tackled in his end zone. It's a safety. The force that took the ball over the end zone was B's run, not A's pass. A's ball on its own 10. A backward pass is muffed by A and goes into the end zone. B tries to recover, but the ball goes out of bounds. This is a safety because it was A's force that put the ball in the end zone. A's backward pass is muffed. It's almost dead on the five, and B tries to recover and muffs it into the end zone. A then muffs it out of bounds. It's not a safety, but a touchback, because it was B's force that put the ball into A's end zone. A passes from his end zone. B bats the ball back into the end zone where it hits the ground and becomes dead. It's just an incomplete pass. But on the same play, A passes, and B bats the ball, which is caught by A, who is down in his end zone. It's a safety, because the force that put the ball in A's end zone was A's pass. The bat was not a new force. OK, that's it for today. Remember, 3.30 tomorrow to draw equipment. That's all. That's the first day. That's the start of it. And the weeks go by till the day that everybody's been waiting for, especially you.
this time it's no daydream. This is it. You've got the equipment, you've had the practice, the coaching, the training. You've had the help of your parents, your coach, your school. But now, brother, it's all up to you.